Let's take a look at our Suzuki starting grid. You heard Jason Leffler, his second bud career pole. Jeff Kareen outside. As we take a look on further down, Hermie Sadler, a bit of a surprise in fourth, Ned. Yes, that is a surprise. In fact, there's a lot of surprises throughout the field here. Some we thought would be further towards the top. Not so, and, and some of the, those we thought would be further towards the back are up towards the front. It's going to be interesting. Ron Hornaday from that 16th starting position. Todd Bodine all the way back in 22nd. Randy LaJoy will start 31st and look at the 41st spot. Kyle Petty had to take a provisional to get in this field, but he has raced here before. Let's take a look at our onboard camera situation. We've got seven of them for you tonight. Ted Musgrave will be driving the China Channel Lock Chevrolet, number 82, and P.J. Jones in the yellow freight Chevrolet, car number 19. Randy LaJoy will be carrying a camera in the Bob Evans Chevrolet. And so will Jay Shoulder and Salter in the Quality Farms and Country Chevrolet. And Mike McLaughlin in the Ghoul's Pub Chevrolet. And we are racing. The green flag flies. Round 22 is underway. Side by side down the back stretch. Wow, Kevin Harvick going to try and make it three wide. Yeah, he does, down on the inside. That's very flat down there, but he's making it work so far. Only seven degrees of banking, and they're still going to go three wide. He's below the yellow line. Well, we saw some trucks try that last night and slid up into other trucks, but he got away with it. Made so a great run there. Harvick jumps into the third spot. There's Elton Sawyer in the number 98. I saw Ford. He's in fourth. Meanwhile, up front, Green has taken the lead from Leffler. Let's get an update on Kevin Harvick, Dave. Well, Marty, remember the race that Kevin Harvick won at Gateway? It was the opening lap where he passed three of the four cars. He started fourth by points, and he got under three of the four cars on the opening lap. He was that aggressive because he knew his car was that good. Could it happen again tonight? Well, he has three top fives in the five short track races here in 2000, so he likes it this way in the bull ring. There's Jason Keller in the 57. That's Hermes Adler in the car 30 right in front of him. Elton Sawyer in car number 98. Trying to make that inside work for him, but right now it isn't working. In fact, he might be losing a little ground. Looks like Hermie may be holding up Jason just a touch, but he doesn't want to go down low. The high line's the fast line around IRP. There he goes. He's got to run. Let's see if he can make it work coming off the corner. He gets up beside of him and drives into turn number three. A little bit harder. Makes the pass. So Jason Keller picks up the spot. And it looks ooh, a little contact there between David Green. Meanwhile, all this going on up top as we look high above from the Goodyear blimp. Jason Keller, a two-time winner here, including last year. There is the gap from fourth up to the top three spots, and there is Jeff Green, the race leader. And Jason Leffler has caught back up to him. Green had pulled out to about a seven or eight car length lead, but now Leffler has caught up to him. So we've got our race underway here at Indianapolis Raceway Park. Stay with us a lot more from the Kroger 200. The 19th running of the Kroger 200 is being brought to you tonight by Daytona USA, the official attraction of NASCAR. By Suzuki, maker of innovative motorcycles and ATVs. And by Doc Otis, a new flavored alcohol malt beverage, real lemon, real refreshment. Unlock the Doc. There is the battle for the race lead. It's the number 10 of Jeff Green and the number 18 of Jason Leffler. We're at the Kroger 200, just getting underway. Jason moved up there just a little bit of a tap a moment ago. Let him know he's there. If Jeff Green is watching, he knows he's there. Now Jason's going to try the low groove, but it didn't quite work. Working lap 15. Down the back straightaway. Sun not really a problem here as it sets at Indianapolis Raceway Park. The bleachers actually on the front straightaway uh, block out the real glare coming through turn four. Now while we were at commercial break, watch Timmy Fidoa. There he is up against the wall, and he is behind the wall now, Ed. Yes, he is behind the wall. I don't... Uh... Apparently a good bit of damage to the right side of his car. Matt is there. Matt 
Well, guys, Billy Nazwitz told him to pull the car behind the wall. There's something wrong with the brakes. It feel like it might have cut the brake line when he struck the wall. Terrible, terrible disappointment for Tim Fidoa. He sits behind the wheel in complete frustration. His chances for a second victory, at least at this juncture of the season, is gone. Lengthy, lengthy repairs for the 36 car. Meanwhile, there is a Jeff Purvis going around for the seventh position. Grubb in the car number 37. This was uh, Grubb's best start at Indianapolis Raceway Park ever. He started 11th, but he's uh, not really finished well here. Uh, 36 back in 97, 28 back in 99. He wants to improve on that. So far, so good. Purvis started 10th, has moved up those three spots. He's got one top 10 in the five short track races so far this season. His average finish has been 23.6, so the quarter cable cars have been struggling on the bull rings. But I think it has been improving on all racetracks in recent weeks. And Ned, you're so right. Part of that change, of course, is uh, new crew chief Doug Riker. He had a second in Milwaukee, a six at Nazareth, and a pole at Pikes Peak. And then last week, a second at Gateway. This was all after he took the weekend off at Watkins Glen to let Curtis Markham drive the car. So they've really come around on the board team, and Jeff Purvis is really happy. And he's coming off a second at the Gateway as well. Take a look at Todd Bodine now at the number 66, the Phillips 66 Chevrolet. Todd is up to 14th. And take a look at on the move. He's come up eight spots so far. That's more than everybody else. Hank Parker Jr. moving up seven spots. LaJoy, Dillon, and Kyle Petty also moving up eight spots. I think Todd was a little disappointed in his qualifying efforts here, but knew that he had a good race car for the race. Of course, they did not get any practice after qualifying. They just practiced for two hours, qualified, and NASCAR impounded the cars and turned them loose then to race. So sometimes a car that's maybe not good in qualifying is good for the race. This is a battle for 11th. Ron Hornaday has taken the position and moves into that spot. We're on board with Ron in the Napa Chevrolet. So Hornaday has moved up five positions here in the early going. Ron was talking earlier today, said, back at Watkins Glen is when I stopped trying to adjust my driving to the car, and the team said, go back to driving your way, we'll build the car around you, and they seem to be having more success now, Ned. Yes, of course, he got that win a few weeks ago, and I, I think that was a good move by them. Of course, his win came at Nazareth. Take a look at our Napa Field summary. You can see the points battle. And already lapping traffic here. That's the uh, number 20 of Tom Hubert that uh, the race leader is trying to tuck underneath. Jeff Green right behind him, Jason Leffler. And if you think any car is going to come back without any kind of rub marks, bends, dings, forget it. On board, that's Ted Musgrave we're on board with. Looking back at the 55 car of Rich, you can see the damage already on the left front fender of Rich's car. Michael Rich got in on a provisional, started 43rd. There's the uh, Johnny Rumley, Ohio State University machine. He barely made it in on time. Started 36. And look at Harvick down on the inside in the two car. What oh, down on the flat part of the racetrack. And, and actually, in certain sections, cambers the opposite direction. It does. And he's making it work. We saw last night in the truck race. Jamie McMurray tried it and ended up taking Randy Tolzma out. So far, Harvick's made it stick. And there's Jason Keller has moved into this battle as well. He's pulled up right behind the kid. There you can see both of them high above from the Goodyear blimp. Right now we have 39 cars on the lead lap. 43 start at the race. There's your race leader, Jeff Green. Seems amazing, Ned, that this guy basically rolled off the truck, made one spring change, and that was it. And everybody else was changing spring shocks and you name it. They were throwing everything at it. So we'll find out if this magical season continues for Jeff Green here at the Kroger 200. Stay with us.
Back at Indianapolis Raceway Park, our first caution on lap 31, and you can see the reason why Tony Raines, the Alka Seltzer Chevrolet, has hit the wall and got a little of assist. Matt, you got an update on uh, Tony's condition? Well, Marty, uh, some trouble here for the 33 car. He was involved in an incident. The problem is something's wrong with the left front brake system. Part of the caliper and rotor are gone. They're going to bring the car possibly behind the wall for more work. Uh, bitter disappointment for this team. Uh, some, the biggest problem could be, though, when they get this car fixed, the left rear of the car was crushed in where the fuel filler neck is, so they're going to have to try to pull that away so that they can at least gas the car. But uh, going to be some tough uh, work on the 33 car tonight. Let's go back and take a look and uh, show you exactly what happened. It was uh, in the turn number three. Keep an eye on the 53 on the left side of your screen. That's Hank Parker Jr. That's the yellow and black car. And Reigns on the outside. And right there, there's contact between the two cars. And it spins Reigns up into the wall. Then we get three abreast there for a moment. But they all get through. But Tony Reigns, a lot of damage to his car. Last year, we had eight cautions. Last night, we had 10 caution periods. Hopefully, we'll uh, try and keep those to a minimum. Tony uh, got it back to the pits. There is your race leader, Jeff Green. He is uh, currently uh, in control of not only this race, but of course, the Bush Series championship point. More racing coming up with NASCAR 2000 continues, of course, tomorrow. On ESPN, we started off at noon Eastern, NASCAR today. Then we'll switch over to ABC Sports at 1 o'clock Eastern time. Join Bob Jenkins and Benny Parsons. Brickyard 400 coverage. And followed at 4.30 Eastern on ABC by IROC 24. Round number four. That's tomorrow on ESPN and ABC. For more, log on to ESPN.com. One of America's most enduring corporate images, the Goodyear blimps floating overhead, providing our aerial views tonight. The spirit of Goodyear is one of seven airships in the Goodyear blimp fleet. Goodyear now has two blimps in Europe, one in South America, one in Australia, and three right here in the U.S. Great shots tonight, guys. Perfect evening to be flying. I wouldn't mind calling the race from up there. What do you think, That'd Nick? be neat, yeah. It's a perfect evening for racing, and we're about to get back to it right now as the green flag is ready to fly. So we get back to action here on lap number 35 after four laps of caution it is jeff green in front of jason leffler kevin harvick that's your top three the white 55 car michael rich is a lap down in fact right now we have 38 cars on the lead lap well i'll tell you what i uh, <laughs> i asked jeff green i said have you ever had a season like you have this year he goes no i Late models, I won 16 out of 22 once, but that was all at the same track. <laughs> well, that was a good average, but he had four wins in the Bush Series coming in to the year 2000. Has already won five races this year, so he has more than doubled his win. And, of course, we saw that big point lead that he has. But he's having a, a super season. Well, let's talk a little bit of strategy. Lap 31, when the caution came out, none of the leaders decided to come in. Fuel's not going to be an issue here. They can go 140, 150 laps easily on fuel. And, but they don't want to give up that track position, no, do they? they do not want to give up track position. We saw it last night in the truck race, and it'll be just as important here tonight. Track position means everything. So I think we'll see them go at least to halfway or past before they'll come into the pits. Well, I asked Jeff Green as far as uh, what his strategy might be, and he saw a couple of the guys go the distance last night on one set of left side tires. You want to talk about a quick year so far? Well, take a look. His career, short track, he has six wins total. Three of them came here in 2000. His average finish, 16.4, now down to 3.4 this year. And that's just in five short track races. Here at IRP, six races. His best was third last year, but look at that average finish, 20. And that's what he's trying to turn around tonight. Dave, you got more? Marty, as you know, a lot of guys start their cars here a little bit free, a little bit loose, because IRP tends to tighten up throughout the race, and that's exactly what Jeff Green and Harold Holly decided to do. But Jeff radioed in, I'm a little bit too free, so Harold radioed back, hey, just uh, put a little bit of front, front brake in, dial in some front brake, and that should tighten him up just a bit. He can always take that out later if he's too tight. Well, right now, he and Jason Leffler are trying to open up a bit of a margin as we go a little further back in the pack, the battle for ninth is starting to heat up. That is Ron Hornaday in the Napa Chevrolet. He's got the spot. Then Kevin Grubb's right behind him. And uh, Wayne Grubb in the 83. So it, uh, the Grubb brothers could be ganging up on Hornaday here pretty soon. Looking out to the rear of Hornaday's car. He is another one of those carrying a camera tonight. 
Of course, Hornaday won here in the uh, NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series on Indianapolis Raceway Park. And uh, Matt Yoakum, you've got more on the Napa Chevy? Well, Marty, as Dave touched on, IRP is very temperature sensitive. Ron Hornaday started his car just a tick loose, hoping that the racetrack would come to him. As the night wore on and the temperature dropped, the car is still a touch loose. I spoke with Jason Keller right before the race. He said his car was still a little bit loose. During practice, he could not get down on the bottom groove, which he was so dominant with last year. They were hoping that the racetrack will come to him around lap 80 to 90. Well, they're racing Stepchild again. That's the name of the car. It's the oldest one in the fleet, and uh, Hornaday just loves it. Coming off that sixth place finish at the uh, Gateway, and of course, he picked up the win at Nazareth. And this is 30th NASCAR Bush Series start. Let's go to the battle for fourth. David Green on the inside of Jason Keller. He's going to take it. Yes, he does. He makes it look easy. Keller comes back up real close to his bumper, but he won't uh, mess with him there because David passed him good clean. So he said, okay, you're faster than I am right now. Go ahead. David, of course, coming off that second place run at Pikes Peak behind uh, brother Jeff, says, uh, I'm going to reverse that roll tonight. And he's uh, taking the first step. He's moved into fourth. Stay with us. we got a lot more action coming your way from Indianapolis Raceway Park at the Kroger 200. Back at the Kroger 200 at Indianapolis Raceway Park, you're looking at the battle for the race lead. Jeff Green in front of Jason Leffler. Leffler started on the pole. Green on the outside of row number one. Green has led every single lap so far here tonight. Leffler has a car that can stay with him, but so far has not been able to mount much of a charge towards passing. Maybe he doesn't want to. He's learning right there. He has, does not have a lot of experience in these bush cars, but boy, back in the pack, there is some racing going on. Battle for 24th here, Ricky Hendrick. 24 down on the inside of Linda Namick, who finished second here last night in the truck race. And that third vehicle is the 45, the Sprint Chevrolet of Kyle Petty. And of course, Kyle had to get in on the uh, provisional. So far, he's had three races since taking over the 45. The best finish back at Nazareth, where he came in fifth, but it wasn't quite as good as Adam had done. Adam came here and run fourth last year, uh, and I always said he had more talent in his little finger than I've got in my whole body. And I guess that shows it. Just to come here and be able to, to do some of the stuff he done, I'm, I'm pretty proud of these guys. Well, you know, he has not run here at IRP since 1990. He finished 13th that year. His best run was an 88 here when he finished 8th. He's uh, adapting to the track again very well. He's going to be doing some double duty now. He's going to be subbing tomorrow for Jeremy Mayfield in the uh, number 12 uh, over at the uh, Brickyard 400. Jeremy, of course, uh, if you had not heard, had contact with the wall, suffered a concussion and a precautionary move. They're going to keep him out of that ride. And Kyle, of course, uh, will get in. He has not practiced that car because he was here all day practicing and qualifying for this event. But he did have laps. Ooh, they get close. They get loose. <laughs> There's Mike Dillon in car number 21 right behind him. He's trying to follow Kyle because he thinks Kyle's going to be the one that prevail in this battle. And, and look at Lyndon. Lyndon's coming down and leaning on him a little bit, saying, don't push me up into that wall. And, oh, my, so close. But that's what short track racing's all about, especially here at Indianapolis Raceway Park. The turns are only seven degrees in banking. Oh, there's a little biff for you. And here comes... And look at, look at Dylan getting these guys going after. Now, let's go back on board with Ted Musgrave, Dick Trickle, and P.J. Jones. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they got pretty close. Mm, very close. And yeah. Trickle comes Is right back for some more. And let's go on board with P.J. Jones, the yellow freight. Well back in the field, the battle for 32nd, but that's just how tight this field is. There's Buckshot Jones. He's getting into this mix as well. He's currently running 34th. Oh, I think there was a little contact there again. Yeah, I think so. Buckshot made a pit stop during that caution, so he's trying to work his way back up through the pack. He gave up a good bit of track position, but apparently his car was not to his liking. So he said, we come in, make an adjustment, and see if he can't uh, get back towards the front. Napa Field Summary, take a look at the points championship now as it continues. On board with Ted Musgrave. Now, this car 
was actually qualified uh, a little bit earlier in the day because Musgrave was over uh, taking care of business by Michael Dawkins. He was over, whoa, a little bit of contact up on the wall. Who was that? It looked like Lyndon Amick. Lyndon Amick. Amick has hit and the wall. And yellow flag is out. So our second caution of the day, and this time Lyndon Amick is the cause. He gets contact with the turn two wall, coming off a great career best, second place in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series race here last night, the Power Stroke 200. But it doesn't look like he's going to be able to duplicate the feat tonight, and he's into the pit. As we saw him battling with Kyle Petty there just a few laps ago. Some of the sheet metal coming off. You can see him working on the uh, right rear seems to be where the most damage is. Now, Marty, we've run 60 laps. They could go the rest of the way on fuel from here. And there is the 21 uh, also involved in this. That's Mike Dillon, the Rockwell Automation uh, set Chevrolet. He's coming off a 30-second at Gateway. Needed a provisional to get into this one tonight. It's been a tough road this year for this team. Yes, it really has. And we speculated on whether the leaders were coming in. They are. All of the cars, looks like on the lead lap, are coming into the pits. Well, and again, it'll be interesting to see what tire strategy. Remember, yeah. several teams went on the left sides last night in the truck race, the complete 200 laps. But in this series, they can change four tires if they choose to. Let's go down to Matt Yoakum. Danny Green in his pit box. He was very happy with the way the 34 car is handling. They're not expected to make any chassis adjustments. Now let's go down to Dave Burns. Four tires for Jeff Green. They're going to take one and one half pounds out of the left rear. He was a little bit tight. We talked about earlier. The 18 of Jason left, but they're going to make a four tire stop as well. And I cannot see that they made a track bar adjustment or not on the 18. Jason was a little bit loose when he came in. And it looks like everybody took advantage and managed to go four tires all the way around. And that would definitely mean that if you wanted to do a quick stop later in the race, you could do just the right sides and be definitely guaranteed to be able to go. You could do that. So as they come back out on the racetrack, we'll sort out who has the race lead after the round of pit stops here at the Kroger 200. Along with Ned Jarrett and down in pit lane, Matt Yogam, Dave Burns, I'm Marty Reed. This is the Kroger 200, the 19th running, and Kroger's been the sponsor every single year that the event's been run here at Indianapolis Raceway Park. We're under our second caution of the day, and there is Jason Leffler. Now, he came in in second position, came out in seventh, Ned, and uh, they're usually known for their very good pit stops, but uh, not this time. Not this time. They lost uh, several positions there. Now. Blaze Alexander is being shown as the leader of this race, and he was, uh, uh, so he lost, Jason lost five positions to those that came in pit. Yeah, look at the team. They yeah. knew that they uh, did not turn out the good number that they wanted to. Dave, uh, what's an update from uh, pit lane? Well, Marty, the reason why is when the Jackman went around, he pumped the car up, but he did not have it twisted all the way through. You have to twist it over to hold it in the up position, and then you twist it to release it, and it goes down again. He had it slightly twisted to the down position, and the car came down prematurely on the right side. That caused the right side to be a little bit slower before they could get around and do the left side tires. All right, so that's the reason for the disappointment in the 18 team, and that's we're getting ready to go racing again next week. And of course, Jason ran in the truck race last night. Unfortunately, he got tangled up uh, with uh, Terry Cook. But the next round of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series is going to come from Nashville Speedway USA, Saturday night, August 12th, 8 o'clock Eastern Time, the Federated Auto Parts 250. Join us on ESPN2. For more, log on to ESPN.com. And big news there was Craftsman has announced a new partnership to sponsor the green flag, green flag. Five, and we're back to green flag racing. As we mentioned, Blaze Alexander, car number 81, is in the lead. He had pitted on lap 32, taking on right side tires, chose to not pit on this caution, so he is the leader. Wow, did you see Tommy Hubert in the AT&T Chevrolet? I mean, he was all over, in the Pontiac, I should say, he was all over the track. He falls back in line. He is a lap down, the car number 20. There he is. He's got it back under control, but uh, a bit of a twitch coming out of turn two last time around. Right now, Jeff Green is all over Blaze Alexander. It's Alexander, then Green. 
there's Leffler and Hornaday, and that's a battle further back in the pack. That's seventh and eighth on the track. And there we go. Jeff Green says, I, I want to get back into the lead blaze. No offense. And look at Harvey. Harvick trying to do the Jamie McMurray move. Luckily, nobody there. Boy, <laughs> he has done that several times. He's exciting to watch. Here he goes again, right down on the bottom of the racetrack. Down there where there really isn't a racetrack. That's just a sort of a uh, lane that you pull off if he's going to the pits. And it is flat, and in fact, some cases, it's cambered the opposite direction of where you would want it to go with the banking of the racetrack, which is seven degrees. Uh, what's the latest on Kevin Harvick? Why is he running down there, Dave? Do you know? Well, Marty, I asked that very question to his crew chief, Todd Barrier, and he said, hey, that's where he used to run his NASCAR Craftsman truck. He's comfortable down there, and we're comfortable with him running the two car on the bottom line. He takes another look underneath the 81 of Blaze Alexander. Not able to get it done this time by, though. That has to use your tires up a little bit more, though, because he's sliding more than those that are running in that upper group. And that has to be heating the tires up a little more, but they made the pass there for second. So that bumps Blaze back to third. He's trying to do better than his uh, best of the season, which was seventh at Atlanta. There's a battle for fifth, and that's getting a little hot and heavy. There's Dave Green and also uh, the 83 in there as well, Wayne Grove. And there's Hornaday in the three car down on the inside. He's just on the inside of Leffler. We're on board with Jeff Purvis as the Napa Field summaries in the upper left-hand portion of your screen. And look at Leffler now. He's having to duke it out further back and it's allowing the race leaders to pull away. Track position so critical here at IRP. So right now, Leffler finds himself in eighth. Here we go. The three of Ron Hornaday, the Napa Chevrolet underneath Dave Green. Can he make it stick side by side? Look how deep he drives it into the turn. And made the pass on Green. Now on the inside of Grubb. Trying to get past Wayne Grubb. Grubb, the Mechanicsville, Virginia native. And it looks like he's going to give up the spot. Matt Yoakum, you got some more on these two guys? Well, Marty, when you talk about pit strategy, you spoke earlier about track position is so important here. Well, Wayne Grubb's crew chief, Bobby King, decided he wanted to go with two tires. He did not want to take the gamble on losing track position while Ron Hornaday decided to go for four tires because they had to make a chassis adjustment because he was still a tick loose off the corner. They also adjusted the three car with air pressure. So with 125 laps to go, the battle continues. Leffler now trying to get under Wayne Grubb. And there's David Green right behind him. Green, as you look at Jeff Purvis said, the number 57 as well, Jason Keller. They're doing it out. Let's go back up front, check in with our race leader. The, the lead now over Kevin Harvick is 1.1 seconds as he comes by the stripe. So Jeff Green in control as well as Joe Rutman was in last night's NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series race. Stay with us. We'll find out if he can keep it up here at the Kroger 200. Jeff Green, your leader. You're looking at our race leader, Jeff Green. He has led now a total of 73 of the 80 laps that we have completed. Yes, Jeff continues to dominate. Let's move a little bit further back. There's a second place, Kevin Harvick. Elton Sawyer has just been passed for third by Ron Hornaday. The Napa Chevrolet is on the move. Whatever adjustments they've made on that car during the pit stop has put him to moving. He has passed a lot of good race cars. Dive down on the inside of the racetrack and moves around them. Hornaday started 16th, and uh, let's get an update on uh, Elton Sawyer. He's running in fourth right behind Hornaday, Dave Burns. Well, that pass by Hornaday is not real good news, but Elton Sawyer needed a break. He was very, very tight on the start of the race, and he went from third back to ninth. He moved his way up to eighth by that first caution, so they came in. They only took on two tires, two right side tires, made a track bar adjustment, and took a rubber out of the right front of the car. So it's running a bit better, but as you can see, Hornaday is really glued, and he's gotten by Sawyer. Well, for Sawyer, he's the uh, veteran of this uh, race. He has raced in this 11 times prior. Uh, that's the most of any of the Bush competitors. His best was a second back in 87 and again in 95. So Elton's done pretty well here at IRP. Let's go back to the battle for 11th, Todd Bodine. And uh, we've got Hermie Sadler and Jay Sauter in this mix as well. Sauter in the number 43. Hermie Sadler being passed by Sauter. So, uh, Hermie in the car number 30. 
These guys have really been going at it back in the pack. On board with Jay Sauter right now. Now this battle as it goes on is about eight and a half seconds behind the race lead and Sauter starting to open up a little bit of ground. He loves this kind of a racetrack because he has a lot of experience on this type of racetrack. Look well, how low he's running too. 151 career ASA wins and his uh, best finish here in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series at IRP was a fifth. He's Todd Medine on the inside of Wayne Grubb in the 83. That is for the 10th position. And it looks like Bodine is going to take it away and hold on to it as we come across the strike with 112 laps to go here at the Kroger 200. Meanwhile, let's go check in with Jeff Green, our race leader. His margin over second place Kevin Harvick is 1.8 seconds. Now, IRP has a tendency to be a benchmark for future champions. Take a look. Larry Pearson did it in 87. Steve Grissom took him three years, but uh, get, got his championship in 93. Then Bobby Labonte in 91. Joe Nemechek in 92. Randy LaJoy twice, 96 and 97. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. won here in 98. And they won the championship two years in a row. So IRP, a winner's track. And Jeff Green, by all accounts, is definitely a winner here in Tour 2000. Stay with us. We're zeroing in on the battle for 15th at the Kroger 200. That's Mike McLaughlin in front on the left side of your screen. Jimmy Johnson has just gotten around. Mike Wallace to take over 16th. We're on board with Mike McLaughlin in the gold pump Chevy. As he looks back at Jimmy Johnson, who just passed, as you said, Mike Wallace. Moved Wallace back to the 17th position. His best finish so far this year for Mike, second back at Nashville. 36th, though, last time out at Gateway. He definitely wants to do a little bit better than that tonight. There's Jimmy Johnson, and there is Mike Wallace. Finished fourth last night in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Still 193 points behind Greg Biffle. And look at Randy LaJoy going underneath him. And LaJoy started 31st, so LaJoy has found something between qualifying and race time. Trying to take over the 17th position. He has passed a lot of race cars here tonight. And he player, did that player, in Nashville. Player. He won a race in Nashville earlier this year. Get, get together a little bit there. Yeah, another and, tire mark. Yeah, but Wallace just backs off and said, okay, go ahead. And uh, LaJoy started near the back. Hey, there's some cars behind you, leader. Some cars behind you. Here, the spotter telling there's two cars behind you. One of them is uh, Kevin Grubb in the 37. Thank him this time. Thank him. You can hear him talking to him. Remember, Randy LaJoy has won two times here, 96. Remember this crash? Watch him tiptoe his way through, and you say, wait a minute. He even hits a tire and manages to survive. It was one of those magical years for Randy LaJoy, like Jeff Green is now having. And then he came right back the very next year and backed it up again, winning from the pole. In fact, he led a total of 281 laps in those two years that he won here at IRP in the Kroger 200. And won the championship those two years as well. On board right now with Randy LaJoy. And that magical season, I mean, Jeff Green's having it this year. Yes, yeah, everything's going his way. Has a great race car. We're at the halfway mark. What's an update on Randy LaJoy, Dave? Well, Marty, when I talked to him earlier today, he wasn't too worried about being back in practice. Did he know something? Well, maybe so. Rumor has it that he has the same shock setup as last night's NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series race winner, Joe Rutman. And I found Fred Wanky down here, and Fred said, yeah, yeah, that's true. So, you know how Rutman ran away with the race last night. LaJoy could have the trick set up tonight. Looks like it's working well for him. He's underneath Jimmy Johnson right now, and uh, that is for position. Johnson is in 16th. LaJoy trying to take it away from him side by side through turn number one. Back on board with LaJoy. One and steady, one and steady. More tire marks. Yeah, Randy is not afraid to do a little bit of rubbing with that right front tire. There's the speed Turn last time. Outside, around. outside, outside, he's there. It's Randy's radio. He's there, that's for sure. Jimmy Johnson, the rookie, coming out of the off-road ranks. Whoa, rookie of the year in uh, ASA and 
now in the Bush Series full time. Gives up the position as you look at the Napa Field summary in the upper left hand corner of your screen. We go back on board with Randy LaJoy now in 16th position. He is 14 seconds behind the race lead, and LaJoy may have the fastest car on the racetrack. I'm checking my screen right now. He is only Ooh, two tenths yeah. off of the pace. I had to, to uh, react there for a moment because Todd Bodine and Jay Sauter got together there for just a moment as they're battling for the eighth and ninth position. You don't have to apologize, Ned. Every time we point a camera, somebody's <laughs> leaning on somebody else in this race. There's David Green, car number 34, coming up on Todd Bodine. Bodine running in the eighth spot. Let's take our cameras back up front. P.J. Jones about to be put a lap down. He is running 32nd. So if Jeff Green can finish this one off, he will have put 31 cars now on the lead lap. You know what's ironic about Jeff Green? He never led a lap here at Indianapolis Raceway Park until tonight. And he's so, making up for it. Yeah, so far he's led 99 of the 107 that we have run. So Jeff Green could be picking up that five extra bonus points for leading the most laps as well, like he really needs them. Back at Indianapolis Raceway Park, the action continues with Jeff Green in control, but you want to catch up on all the action? Well, it's RPM today, tonight, and it's all tomorrow on ESPN2, 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time, 8.30 a.m. out on the Pacific Coast. Then again at 9 o'clock Eastern Time, that's all tomorrow on ESPN2. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Check in with our uh, race leader. That is Jeff Green. Right now, he's trying to put Phil Parsons a lap down. Parsons is in 29th position, and he's going to be in the booth with us next week on our NASCAR Crash Truck Series. Race. He's good at that. I've uh, seen him work some events in the past. Of course, he's uh, the younger brother of Benny, and everybody knows Benny and the great work that he's done over the years, but Jeff Green is putting a lot of good cars a lap down. Matt, you got an update for us on Jeff Green? Well, Marty, entering tonight, Jeff Green had never led a lap at IRP in a Bush Series car. Harold Holly told me that last year they feel like they had a car that could have won here, but it finished third because they feel like they chose the wrong gear. They went with too low of a gear. Instead of a 529 like last year, they went with a 514 tonight because last year they felt like the tire was going to slow down considerably, but it didn't, so they went with a different gear, and it's paying off this evening. Go to the battle for second. Kevin Harvick, Ron Hornaday. They have history from the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, and Hornaday is a rocket ship right now. He made it look easy, Ned. He did. Well, he, he has come up through there since they made that pit stop. Whatever they did, it uh, really is working for him. He's driving his heart out. P.J. Jones, we were on board with him in the yellow freight Chevrolet. Now we're on board with uh, Ron Hornaday looking back. Now, Hornaday is about two and three-tenths seconds behind the leader, Jeff Green. The Green is uh, still in heavy traffic. Yeah, the thing that surprises me is that everybody just assumed because this was the same car that won the championship last year that Hornaday should be winning more than he is. I, I, I think that's a bit unfair, don't you? Well, I think it is, too, because it's a totally different team than Dale Earnhardt Jr. drove for last year. Matt? Ned, Ned, only one remaining member on this team, Kevin Pinnell, the Jackman, is still here from the Dale Jr. and Steve Park years. Kevin told me it seemed very eerie today because, unlike a lot of cars who were complaining about being very loose, Ron Horner, they said his car was neutral. We have a crash on the racetrack. Boy, we got vehicles all over each other. Kevin Grubb climbs all over Hank Parker. Grubb just run all over the left side of us. Come on if you can. Yeah, you can hear it, the spotter. And he's accurate, and he literally did climb up over. We've got cars into the wall as well back in turn number one. About four or five vehicles total wrapped up in this. Oh, and there is Mike McLaughlin, and he is not happy. The gloves are off, and McLaughlin's out of this one. And there's another vehicle to the right of Mike, and can't make out a number. Ouch, that'll hurt your hand. Boy, he's had a tough year. Just everything that could go wrong, it seems, has gone wrong for him. Our That's third car number 83 there. Yeah, so the 83 Wayne also. Wayne Grubb in the Link Belt Chevrolet wrapped up in this mess as well. So uh, we're going to be under our third 
yellow flag and the leaders look like they're coming in. Now remember, they took four tires last time. Here we are at lap 120. Matt Yoakum, they're coming your way. Ron Hornaday hits his pit box. You can see the wedge wrench is in the rear corner of the car. Almost a full round. It is a four tire stop. Ron said the car had gone from being a tick loose to tight. So they were going to adjust that also with air pressure. Dave Burns. Jeff Green is on a four tire pit stop. No adjustment so far. It looks pretty good. As, uh, as far as Elton Sawyer is concerned, they're making a four-tire stop as well. One round down on the right rear. He continues to be tight here at IRP. Oh, 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 oh. Drag race coming out of the pits. There's Elton yeah. Sawyer coming out as well. It's going to be interesting to see if Hornaday or Jeff Green gets the lead. Well, I think Jeff Green thinks that he beat Hornaday out, and I think he did too, but Hornaday was coming down pit road at a pretty good clip, and of course, Green hitting right at the end of pit road and they were side by side as they went across that line. But I believe Green was maybe in front. Well, Ron needs to be careful, too. Remember, pit lane speed, 35 miles an hour here tonight at Indianapolis Raceway Park. Stay with us as uh, this mess continues to get cleaned up. Uh, we'll show you what happened and when we come back to the action here at Indianapolis. The 19th running of the Kroger 200 at Indianapolis Raceway Park is being brought to you by 1-800-COLLECT, the easy way to save. By McDonald's, we love to see you smile. And by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. Under our third caution, Marty Reed alongside with Ned Jarrett down in pit lane, Matt Yoakum and Dave Burns. And uh, we'll give you an idea of why we're under this third caution. Let you uh, see what happened and sort it out in your own mind as to whose fault. There they are on the right side of the screen, Ned. Mark McLaughlin in the blue and white car down on the inside of Wayne Grubb. And they get together going into the turn. And both of them hit each other and hit the wall pretty hard. And then the 20 car spins around, and here comes third, the 37 car of Mark Green gets up on top of Hank Parker's car, finally gets off of it. On board with McLaughlin. Listen. There goes the 20 of Hubert. And he was not very happy, and watch what happens as uh, he is bridging the gap of communication. Now, this is a unique way of having a discussion. It is. And I think he's explaining what happened when he came into the turn on the inside to Wayne Grubb. Let's, maybe uh, Wayne uh, is listening there, but uh, Matt? Matt? Well, Mike McLaughlin is OK. That's the good news. The bad news, Mike, the car looks very, very damaged. What happened? Yeah, it's tore up. I mean, you're going pretty good here. You know, it's a shorter track. Uh, it's tore up pretty good. Just Feel bad for Gould Pump, my town, Lou Meyer, and uh, Gulfstream. We haven't had uh, much, many good finishes this year. They haven't gotten what they deserve. We'll be back next week. I saw you had some words with the 83's driver, Wayne Grubb. What'd you say? I'll just check and see if he's all right. Well, good news <laughs> that apparently both drivers are okay, but obviously disappointed. I'm really sure that's what the conversation was, guys. <laughs> yeah, so was I. <laughs> when you see the video, Matt, you'll understand why we're chuckling. Uh, <laughs> nice of him to do that, to check, oh, check on yeah, his fellow very, driver. There. Very caring, a very caring guy. All right, so you can see they're still trying to clean up the mess here. We've got a lot of uh, beating and banging coming your way with NFL preseason action, and uh, the action's going to be Atlanta versus Dallas, the American Bowl from Tokyo, Japan. That's going to happen tomorrow, 10 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Still under our third caution of the night. Stay with us back after this. Back at the Kroger 200, lights out on the pace car, green next time by. Jeff Purvis is our race leader. He got out in front of Ron Hornaday and Jeff Green. Matt, give us an update on how he did it. Marty, basically, they were going for track position. Doug Richard decided they wanted to go two tires instead of four for track position. They also made a chassis adjustment because the car was just a little bit tight. But basically, some guys went four, some two. Also, the 34 car decided to go four tires of scuffs because they started the race on scuffs. 
First stop, they went stickers. They went back to scuffs because David Green liked the feel of the car on scuffs. Well, Purvis, coming off of two career wins and a second last week at Gateway, is going to lead this pack back to the green flag coming out of turn number four. We have 24 cars on the lead lap, and we're working on green, green, green. 128. Here we go. And this makes for a tough situation, Marty, because on the other restarts, basically everyone was in the lead lap. Now you got about half of the field that are lap down, and they're up there trying to get lap back or trying to outrun those behind them that are a lap down. Yeah, Mark Green in the uh, Exxon Superflow car, one of those lap vehicles, uh, he's falling back third in line. Also, Phil Parsons. And you're right, those are now obstacles that everybody else has to move around. On board with Jeff Purvis. And we we question whether ooh. it looked like the 59 of Phil Parsons rubbed the outside wall coming out of turn number two, and he is slowing. He is slowing up on the high side of the racetrack. There's Jay Sauter going underneath him as well, Todd Bodine. So Phil, who is a, a lap down already, is hung out, and you can see the marks on the right side. Quite a bit of damage on the right side of his Chevrolet. So the action continues, Phil. Working his way, trying. It looks like maybe it's not going to try and get down to pit lane now. I thought he was trying to find a spot to squeeze in. And he probably was just for a lap was feeding the car out. Did I cut a tire down? Or what what went wrong? And so he's standing up there running. High above from the Goodyear blimp, we work our way back towards the front of the field. There is Harvick again running below the line. There is the number 10 of uh, Jeff Green. He is currently running in third position. Started to mention there a moment ago that, that we were not sure if he beat Ron Hornaday out of the pits or not, but NASCAR determined that Ron Hornaday beat Green out of the pits. So as a result, Hornaday is in second now and Green in third. There is Jason Leffler in fourth. He's fought his way back up. Then Elton Sawyer in fifth with uh, 69 laps to go. Let's get an update on both these guys from Dave Burns. Marty, Jason Leffler's crew very disappointed with themselves the first time with that jack problem we documented. This time they ripped off a 17.4 second perfect stop for Jason. No adjustments on the car. As for Elton Sawyer, they made all kinds of adjustments. Air pressure adjustments in three tires plus a wedge adjustment. He is still battling a tight condition. Well, everybody is battling to try and catch up to the race leader who is now Jeff Purvis. He's got a 1.1 second lead over Ron Hornaday. There is Leffler in fourth. He is 2.5 seconds behind the race lead. If you're into numerology, Jason Leffler sat on the pole tonight. The 18 of Joe Rutman sat on the pole last night and won. So who knows? We'll figure it out. There's Kevin Harvick. Boy, he still likes that bottom line. And one of the few cars that's been able to run it there even as the laps progress and the tires wear. He's apparently he set his race car up so that it would do that. Not a lot of people running down there, so he doesn't have uh, too much traffic. He has traffic on the outside of him, but, but nobody down in front of him. On board with Jay Sauter in the Quality Farm and Country Chevrolet. That's Mark Green that he's going around. Mark is in 25th. He is the first car on the lap that is one lap down. The Napa Field summary continues in your upper left-hand corner. Get you updated on everything, how the Chevrolets are running. Well, we see Mark Green. I think I mentioned that, that he's the one that got up on uh, Hank Parker, but that was Kevin Grubb in car number 37. So I apologize for that. Well, the other thing that's interesting is the 53 of Hank Parker Jr., despite all that damage, stayed on the lead lap. He's running yeah. 22nd right now, 12 seconds behind the race lead. Yeah, he's picked up a couple of positions since they restarted. It was amazing. They've made numerous pit stops during the caution, but managed to stay on the lead lap and uh, running pretty decent. There is the 98 of Elton Sawyer in fifth. Then you've got the 57 right behind him. As uh, Jason Keller trying to take the position, let's go back on board with the Porter Cable Machine, the number four of Jeff Purvis. He has two top ten finishes here, a sixth last year. We are back under caution here at Indianapolis Raceway Park, the 19th running of the Kroger 200. That's Ricky Hendricks, GMAC Financial Services Chevrolet. It is one of the victims of this latest incident while we were in commercial break. Here on lap number 143, we had about a five-car pileup down in turn number one. Oh, man, does Ricky have some damage. It looks like something's been up on his hood. Here's Dick Trickle. He was involved in it. See the damage to the 
rear of his car, also the hood of his car. Ricky Hendrick had a 12th place finish last night in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series race. Not going to happen tonight. And there is Tony Raines. He is back out. Now, he was listed 88 laps down in 43rd. And looks like he's got more damage. And there's Casey Atwood. He has some damage as well. Now, we don't know how this all started. Just look up into the right-hand corner of your screen. You can see everybody in there. There's Tony Raines, the 33. Johnny Rumley, also Hank Parker, Jr. Timmy Fidoa and also the five of Trickle and Ricky Hendrick. So that gives you an idea just how many cars got into this mess. And now everybody's trying to fix it. Tony Raines, they're going to need more than an Alka Seltzer and a Bear to get that baby patched together. Yeah, he has already been behind the wall for a lot of laps due to a previous situation. Well, while we got the chance, let's look down from high above. The year 2000 marks the 75th anniversary for the Goodyear blimp. And since 1925, millions have watched Goodyear's airships while they hover over special events. Today, spirit of Goodyear carrying on the proud tradition. And thanks, guys. It has been a lot of fun having you here the last two days. Cleanup continues out on the racetrack, and you can see the... 45 mile an hour pace speed, 35 miles an hour in pit lane. And what a wonderful facility here at Indianapolis Raceway Park. They have put so much money back into the grandstands right there on the lower left portion of your screen. There are suites, uh, very great layout now. And let's go down to uh, Dave Burns who's caught up with the man who's in charge of Jeff Purvis. And that is Doug Reichert. And Doug, you obviously uh, did the two tire stop track position, very important. Does Jeff need anything else to win this thing and stay out in front of these guys? Well, track position is very important here today. So, you know, our, our choice last week was to do two tires, and we did it this week. So, you know, we got our Porter Cable Pontiac out front, and I uh, hope that we can just stay there. Uh, it seemed like uh, the times was pretty good compared to the three and the ten. So the biggest thing we're doing this for is, you know, we've got about 70 people back at the auditorium. I hope you're all pulling for us. If you've ever been to Gibbs Racing, there is an auditorium there, and there's a lot of seats. Well, we are working lap number 146 of 200, and there is the race leader. His name is Jeff Purvis. Indianapolis Raceway Park holds 40,000 people, and it is almost sold out tonight. We had 29,000 last night for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series race. And a little bit earlier in the week, we had absolutely no one except maybe three guys who found out we were going go-karting. Last week, I challenged some of the NASCAR Bush and truck drivers at Stephen Johansson's karting center. Names like Tony Raines, Todd Bodine, and Jason Leffler were up to my challenge. So after they got schooled on how to drive these complicated machines, it was on to the track. No egos in the way here, although I got to tell you, my car must have had some problems. I was not as competitive as I should have been, although I did give Tony Raines a run for his money. But as usual, the competitive edge got the better of some. There's Terry Cook getting into Jason Leffler. Looks like last night's truck race, huh? Well, we did have a blast, a ton of fun. And while Leffler won the first round, taking the flag there, it was Randy Tolsma who took home the checkered flag overall. I was so bad, the guys on the podium asked me to lay flat in the floor. <laughs> Now, wait a minute, why are you <laughs> chuckling there? You know how bad I really was. There's Jason Leffler. I'll tell you what, he's so lightweight, and he's had so many practice laps. He was flying, and then Randy Tolsma took his cart and did the same kind of number, and Todd Bodine uh, had a blast as well. We had a, we had a ball. It was great to, to have some fun. There is the Phillips 66 car with Todd. Let's get an update on uh, Todd's condition. Matt? Well, Marty, pretty much the entire race, Todd Bodine has been complaining about the 66 car being very tight. Every stop, they've made chassis adjustments. Still, the car is tight. The last stop, four tires and one round of wedge. The biggest battle, though, for Todd Bodine could be trying to earn second in points. The chances, of course, of winning the championship are very slim with Jeff Green's big 547-point lead. But... They are trying for that second place in points. The battle right now between he and the 57 car. You look over the past three years, they are very, very close in stats. This could be a very good battle to the finish. Dave? 
for Jason Kelly, the defending race winner. Last year, his car was tightening up throughout the race and was very tight at the end. In fact, everybody was catching him, and he was glad for the yellow flag laps to go to the finish. I just checked with his crew chief, Steve Addington, and Steve said, well, we got the same thing going on tonight. It's just tightening up all night long. I asked him if there was anything else they could do to it, and he said, probably just Jason adjusting the brake bias inside the cockpit. But hey, once it gets to the end of that, he's all done. Well, Jason Keller, likes this track here at Indianapolis Raceway Park and take a look at consistency really does count in the 2000 season he's got the one win 11 top tens five eight of those in the top five his average finish 12th and he's second in the points coming in and he has two wins here at Indianapolis Raceway Park his first one back in 95 in the Bush Series and again last year and that was his first win in the Bush Series That's right. when he won here at IRP we're about to go racing again they got the flag the notification the last time by that they'll get the green flag when they come back. Dennis Dillard in the pace car getting uh, pulled off down into turn three. Chuck Crouch with flag in hand as we're getting ready to go back to green flag racing here at the Kroger 200. Matt Abernathy waves the flag and we're back underway here on lap number 152. And look at Hornaday, he's gonna try a quick move to get around Jeff Purvis. Took a big risk there. He's now right up side by side with Purvis. Gives him the slide job. Oh, and they do touch. And Hornaday, who has won here in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, has the race lead. Jeff Green in third. Locked in fourth. Boy, he's surrounded by lap traffic is Jason Leffler. He's got to fight his way out of that. Now he gets free of all but one of the lap cars. That is Mark Green in the uh, 63 Exxon Superflow Chevrolet. And those, those leaders are getting away in a hurry, Marty. Yeah, I mean, you can just see how quickly he's going. And now Jeff Green seems to be reeling in Jeff Purvis. As they dive down towards three, we go on board the Porter Cable Machine. We can see how the banking changes here. It's only seven degrees in the corners, three degrees on the straightaway, but it flattens out at the bottom of the track. So Ron Hornaday becomes the fourth different driver to lead this race. We've had a total of four lead changes. Jeff Green's gonna get the points for leading the most laps. Let's move back to the battle for sixth right now. Uh-oh, got a problem. The number 17 to Jason Schuler. No caution yet on the race course, but Schuler, the Cambridge, Wisconsin. And we got another oh, crash, another down, crash in down in turn two while all this was going on. The 19 gets turned around, P.J. Jones, then gets tagged. And now the caution flies, and it will be our fifth of the race evening. And PJ's got it fired up again. And he's staying out on the track. Jones right now, one lap down. He doesn't want to go two down. He's in 30th position. PJ, the winner of the Rolex 24 at Daytona back in 1993. He's driving with a very sore right foot. Right after qualifying, uh, we got word that they dropped the jack stand on his foot, on his throttle pedal. And he's uh, limping around, but he's uh, still behind the wheel, and he's caught up to the pace car. We're at the NASCAR Bush Series Kroger 200. Jeff Purvis is in second behind Ron Hornaday. Back at the Kroger 200, uh, gotta tell you, Sports Center is not next. It'll be baseball tonight, but we give you an A for effort, gang. Glad to have you out here. Close to 40,000. We're under our fifth caution here at the Kroger 200. Let's show you why and take you back. First, it was the 17 of Jason Schuler. Yeah, can't tell if he got with someone up there that caused him to spin down to the inside. His car hit the inside retaining wall with the right side, and while he was sitting there trying to get going again, the caution had not come out, and then all of a sudden, over in turn two, P.J. Jones spins around. Maybe with uh, a little help from he and Mike Dillon could have gotten together there. Well, we may get a better look on board. You see Kyle Petty, who's running 17th. Here we go, on board. Well, I don't know. There's... 
Looks like DJ yeah, might have yeah, just got a little yeah, too deep. A little too, too uh, fast on the inside, and it uh, got away from him. So we're back on board with PJ Jones as uh, he is in 29th position now. One lap down, he's managed to, to stay on that one lap position behind the race leader, who is Ron Hornaday right now. Of course, his dad, Parnell, is here with him here this weekend. I had a chance to talk to him today. And they tell us Paige is doing very well. Paige, I know you're watching. Thanks for joining us. Stay there. We've just gone back to green flag racing here, lap 163 of 200 at the Kroger 200. Ron Hornaday is the race leader in front of Jeff Purvis. Jeff Green running in third. Jason Leffler is fourth. And last year's winner here, Jason Keller, is fifth. Hornaday, who has 25 career wins in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, one win in Bush competition earlier this year. All right, buddy, hold up, hold up, hold up, turn two. So while all this action continues, there is Jay Sauter, the man who made contact with the wall. And we've got our sixth caution on board with Sauter. He's given us a fireworks display. They had a good run going here tonight. He's in the top 10. Sauter, originally from Wisconsin, now calls Mooresville, North Carolina home in the Quality Farm and Country Chevrolet. 38 year old and uh, not the kind of night that he wanted to have. As you can see the damage on that right front, he slapped it pretty good. He did. That's too bad. This is the son of Jim Sauter, famous race driver. Oh, whoops. Well, it's I think. Right. He does not think that Andy Kirby did him justice. It sort of appears that way. Let's take a look at it. Look for the number 43. Oh, it's a little late yeah. by then. But yeah, there's Andy Kirby Yeah, he was, he was in the picture, so. <laughs> well, at least uh, Jay didn't T-bone him and ram him all up. Just gave him a little nudge saying, excuse me, I want you to realize something here. Contact. Yep, it, it did because Kirby was almost out of control when he got on by. Well, this is Kirby's Sorry. eighth Bush Series start. And Matt, you're down with the 43. And Marty, he's pulling off pit road. He's going to try to pull the car back behind the wall. You can see by the picture that the right front has considerable damage, a lot of sparks. There's a lot of damage underneath on that right front, so they're going to pull it behind the wall to try to get it back out, at least try to get some points and salvage tonight. Well, Jay's best run so far this year in the Bush Series, fourth back at Daytona, 18th last time out at Gateway. And there is the 39 with a flat left rear tire. So Andy Kirby is going to have to come in and get some service as well. He's from Nashville, Tennessee, the 38-year-old. His uh, career best finish was 19th at Talladega. And yeah. right now he's 30th. Three laps down. So he brings the... Uh, car into the pit lane. He'll try and get the, those repairs done. Meanwhile, Jeff Green currently running in third position. We've already talked about the fact he picked up five bonus points for leading a lap, and he got the five extra points. He's already led 113 laps, which is more than half the distance. So he's got a 10-point bonus right there. Race fans know that the Bush Grand National teams crisscross the country week after week and spend a lot of time away from home. That's hard enough. But it's really hard when you lose your best friend, and that's what happened to Harold Holly this week. He's from Pell City, Alabama, and his best friend, Hardy Joe Wilson, was killed in a traffic accident earlier this week. That would actually happen on Tuesday, and Harold has been very down since. He went Wednesday and Thursday at home to be with the family, and he's dedicating this race to his friend, Hardy Joe Wilson. They grew up together. Hardy watched every race that Harold was covering and crew chiefing for Jeff Green. So tonight, in honor of Hardy, and with a heavy heart, they race here at IRP. Send our condolences on to the family as well. And th this is a tough business sometimes, Ned. It is. It's a, it's a very tough business, but it never stops. It just keeps moving on. It's like a traveling show from one town to the next, and everybody packs up and heads on. We're getting ready to go back to green flag racing. Pace car has pulled off. Dennis Dillard, look at the crowd here. An excellent crowd. The place holds 40,000, and you can't find very many empty seats here tonight. Leading them down will be Ron Hornaday. Now, he's always been known for his restarts. Last time he got a great one. Will he do it again? We're back to green. green, green, green. 
Purvis trying to hang on to him, but look at the jump he gets, Ned. He oh. is the master at it. I think he learned that from Dale Earnhardt. Jason Jarrett apparently was penalized for leaving pit road too fast. On board with Ron Hornaday. There's our Napa Field summary. With 170 laps now complete, only 30 remain. Can Ron Hornaday make it a second win here in the NASCAR 2000 series? Jeff Purvis says, I don't want to give it to him. And here he comes, he's closing. Now remember, Purvis did not change left side tires on the last pit stop, but he was pulling away before that series of cautions, and Hornaday got by him on a restart. And so his car remained good, even though his left side tires are older. For Purvis, the last time he saw victory lane in the series was 96 at Michigan. That's 94 starts ago. So he wants to end that drought before it hits triple digits. On board again with Jeff Purvis. Late in this race, oh boy, here we go. Late in this race, you, you want to be in the lead. It's so hard to pass here, but Purvis is all over the back bumper of the Napa Chevrolet. It's a Chevy Pontiac duel right now. We go back on board with Ron Hornaday. Let's see who is the quickest this time by. As we go at the line, and here he comes out of turn four. There shouldn't be a lot of difference in their speed. Well, look at third place. Jeff Green's the quickest. Yeah, I think while this guy was battling up there, that uh, scrubbed a little speed off of them, and Green sitting back there all by himself, just watching those. He stayed far enough back that if they do get in trouble, he'd have room to dodge him. Here comes Purvis trying to make a move. Jeff looking underneath, can't get it done, falls back in the line. This time at the line, again, Jeff Green is the quickest, almost 109 miles an hour. Remember, Leffler qualified at 111. So these guys are putting down some pretty big numbers late in the race with 25 laps remaining. And here comes Purvis again. I think Purvis has the faster race car if he could just make the pass. Well, Hornaday is a master at uh, covering up the racetrack. A couple years ago, he and Jack Sprague got into it in the truck race late. Sprague got into Hornaday, sent him to the wall, went on to win the race. We almost had a full out Donnybrook in the pits between the two teams. Now Jeff Green has moved up closer to Purvis. Purvis lost a, a little bit of the distance between he and Hornaday. If Green holds on to just this third position, it would be his 19th top 10 finish and 17th in the top five. Wow, that is consistency and domination, really. This is round number 22 of the series, so it just gives you an idea of how magical a year it's been for that man in the Nestle's Nesquik number 10 Chevrolet, Jeff Green. Now these three pretty much in lockstep. They have opened up a bit of a gap uh, to fourth spot. You can see it just tweaking into the picture there. Jason Leffler running in fourth, and he has Jason Keller right on his back bumper. So the two Jasons putting up a good battle. How many Jasons we have in this field tonight? Jason well, Leffler, Keller, Jerry. Uh, I took Jason in the pool. I figured I had my best odds. <laughs> well, you, by numbers you would have had. Leffler from Long Beach, California, qualified on the pole at 21.9 seconds, and right now running in the fourth position. Let's go back and pick up in the uh, battle for 12th, the 21, Mike Dillon, and the number one, Randy LaJoy. Now remember, LaJoy had a horrible qualifying, started 31st, he's moved up to 13th. And the other guy, Dillon, this would be a, a, a big boost for them. I mean, they've been struggling all year long, coming off a 32nd last time out at Gateway. The best he's run this year has been ninth, and that was the season opener at Daytona. So Dylan's got a good one going. He moves on the inside of the car number 46. 
going to try to get by him. Of course, the 46 car is not on the lead lap. He's one lap down. That's Ashton Lewis, Jr. He's having a good run tonight. Got a lap down early. Got 18 laps to go here at the Kroger 200. Kyle Petty trying to fight his way. Remember, he had to take a provisional to get into the, the field tonight. He is currently running in the 16th position, holding off Buckshot Jones at 17. Buckshot looks like he wants to try the high side, but Kyle's trying the low side, but look at Purvis. He's working on Hornaday again. Man, the optical illusion there made it look like he was rubbing bumpers, but uh, he was clear. Now, looking inside, the fans come to their feet at the stripe. Hornaday holds him off one more time. Now we have 16 laps to go. It is so hard to get traction down on the inside the way that you need when you're trying to pass a fast car. Now, if you're passing a car that's you're already outrunning by half a second a lap, it's a little easier to do. Fuel is not going to be a problem in this one. How much tire wear you get is going to be the key. Now, at lap number 120 was the last time that our race leaders pitted. The four took only right side tires, and then the number three of Hornaday took on all four. So if there's a disadvantage, Purvis has given up a little bit of grip on the lefts, but, you know, last night, trucks were making it on 200 laps on the left. They were, in fact, uh and the name finished second. It did not change left side tires last night. And I think a lot of people paid attention to that. And I think one thing that's happening that's allowing them to do that, Marty, over the past is the fact that they're running such soft spring setups on these cars. I can't believe how soft the springs they tell me that they're running, like five and 600 pound springs on the front and, uh, and about a 500 pound spring on the right rear. Watch their man lead the race out there. <laughs> they, turned, they turned their back to the track. They were so nervous. He didn't want to look. Take a look at the comparison here as uh, Hornaday and Purvis. You can see the differential. There he goes, streaking through third place, Jeff Green. Now we're moving a little bit further back. Todd Bodine picks up the seventh spot, getting around David Green. So David moves back. There's Kevin Harvick in the car number two. He is in ninth position. Yeah, Harvick uh, was running up in the top lead group for quite a while, but uh, has now dropped back to the ninth position. And as these guys come streaking by the stripe, this time we'll tell you how far they are behind the leaders. About five and a half seconds. So uh, as the laps wind down, next time by, there'll be 10 laps remaining. It looks like right now it's a three-car battle, and really Purvis is trying to make it a two-car show with Purvis going side-by-side side with Hornaday. Can he get him down into one? He's staying on that inside. No, giving up. Just had to back off a little bit more than 100. But here he comes, back on the inside, coming off the corner. And caution is out. The caution flies again. That is going to be our seventh caution. We've got a car up into the wall in turn number three, and that is Buckshot Jones. And there is damage on the right side of the cheese and Pontiac. Buckshot was on the lead lap up there battling with Kyle Petty and a group in their 15th, 16th, and 17th. And let me correct myself. It used to be a Pontiac. Now it's the cheese at Chevrolet. Stay with us. We're under our seventh caution. Last year, the race ended under caution. Hopefully not this year. We've got eight laps to go. The 19th running of the Kroger 200 from Indianapolis Raceway Park is being brought to you tonight by Doc Otis. A new flavored alcohol malt beverage, real lemon, real refreshment. Unlock the Doc. And by DiGiorno Rising Crust Pizza. It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. And by Team Monte Carlo. The cars more champions depend on. Chevy will be there. Along with Ned Jarrett, I'm Marty Reed. Down in pit lane, Matt Yoakum and Dave Burns. You're looking at Ron Hornaday Jr. from Palmdale, California originally. He is the race leader, and he has made that Napa Chevrolet as wide as he can. Yeah, and I don't think Jeff Bur Purvis wanted to see this caution because he was working on He was up beside of Hornaday, and he knows how good Hornaday is on these restarts, and so he knows it's going to be tougher to pass him. Buckshot being towed back to the uh, pit area. This is uh, all we have on the crash. Not a whole heck of a lot, but uh, I don't see anybody else, but he was in a gaggle of cars there for a while. Yes, he was. He was in there racing with Kyle Petty and 
and Blaze Alexander and Hermie Sadler were all in there battling together, but I, I don't know what happened. Well, this time by, we will have six laps remaining here, and the lights on the pace car go out. So next time by, let's go down to the pits. Matt Yoakum, you're up first. Marty, the biggest thing for Ron Hornaday always, he's known for his restarts in the truck series. They made special transmissions so he could get a very good jump in first gear, but they're not doing that as much in the Bush series. Their concern, though, is the four car has only two tires. They're worried that the four car is going to cool their tires. They may get a run them because they are not very good in the center of the corner as the run goes on, but we're going to have a shootout, Dave. Matt, you're exactly right. Even though Ned mentioned the fact that Ron Hornaday has great restarts, Jeff Purvis was cooling his tires prior to making that last charge. And that is what was confirmed by Crew Chief Doug Record. He gave me a big thumbs up. They were cooling their tires. So this actually works very well for Purvis. He needed to cool his tires down. But Ned, like you said, now he's got to battle the restart master. And he doesn't have long to do it. A single file restart. Yep, the 10 lap rule in effect. So there is the Napa crew all up on the wall. So the 17 cars that are on the lead lap get to come to the line first. Pace car driven by Dennis Dillard is off, and we are back underway. And look at the Napa Chevrolet. Hornaday does it again. Working lap number 196, but look at Purvis trying down the back straightaway. Well, Purvis got a good run off of turn two. Now, let's see, he drives in a little bit deeper than Hornaday. Here's where he's been getting when coming off of turn four. He gets right up on his back bumper this time. Four laps to go, this time by Hornaday. Purvis, third place is Jeff Green, fourth is Jason Leffler. Last year's winner, Jason Keller, is in fifth, but right now, it's a two-car shootout, Ned. Well, Jeff Green doesn't seem to have anything for these guys. He's just sitting there in case they get together. He'll take advantage of Here comes Purvis again. Turn four has been his strong suit. Down into one, can't make it stick. He has to back off, but he gets a good run off of turn two also. Let's see if he can make it work. No, he slips a little bit this time. Next time by two laps remaining. Here comes Jeff Green and Jason Leffler. Remember, Leffler started from the pole. Hornaday started in the 16th position. Sammy's a nervous wreck. It's time to be nervous. Down the back straightaway, one and a half laps to go. Hornaday has opened it up to about two and a half car lengths. And here comes Green up on the back bumper of Purvis. Good Green sneak by like he needs the points. White flag out. One more time around the 5 8 mile of Indianapolis Raceway Park. The Napa Chevrolet, Ron Hornaday, down the back straightaway. Purvis almost got into the wall on turn two. Started 16th. He's going to make it two wins in the 2000 campaign. He won at Nazareth and he wins again tonight here at Indianapolis Raceway Park in the Kroger 200. Behind Hornaday, it's Purvis, Jeff Green, Jason Leffler, and Jason Keller. And look at the celebration. Dave, it's all yours. Well, and Jer Kinnan is standing over here with me, and what a fantastic run for Ron Hornaday. And Jared, can you believe you came all the way? <laughs> the team can't believe all the way from 16th to do it. Yeah, man, he drove his heart out. These guys, pit stop, got the lead. Hey, he's the man. He's the man. Nobody else drives that car but him. And Steve Meal was coming in with just as big a cheer. These guys are pumped. Look at the emotion. And here comes Hornet. He's familiar with this routine. He won here in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, 25 victories. He's the all-time career win leader in that series. And he's now picked up career win number two here in the NASCAR Bush Series at the Kroger 200. Stay with us. When we come back, we'll talk to our winner in victory lane. You're looking at race winner Ron Hornaday, and we make our way down to the McDonald's Winner Circle interview. Matt Yoakum is there, and here he comes. Ron Hornaday Jr. climbs out of the three car, victorious, 30 starts, and we're getting showered by just about everything. 30 career starts. He picks up his second career win, the second time here in two years. Ron doesn't get much more of a thrilling finish than that. Congratulations. That was all right, whatever that was, it burned my eyes. First of all, I gotta thank Napa just for sticking with us and everything. We've been through this year and 
this Chevrolet ran off, and Goodyear came out with an awesome tire. And I'm telling you, uh, these guys got a lot of faith in me, and I got a lot of faith in them. This, this whole thing is a uh, team effort. They got me in and out of the pits. This whole, this whole race was their race, I'm telling you. I just drove my heart out. These guys put a car underneath me, and they worked their guts out. I got to thank Nap again. I mean, I just can't. Ron Hunter, what an awesome motor. I just got to thank everybody that's got behind us. I didn't think we had a chance starting that far back, but it was pretty cool. Awesome motor, awesome car, awesome finish, Mark. And Ron's missing the fireworks. Look at the show going on from the Goodyear Blimp. Take a look at the unofficial results. And behind uh, Hornaday, Purvis, Green, Leffler, Keller, your top five. A top ten for Andy Santer, his fourth of the year. And look at Randy LaJoy, started 31st, came home in 13th. 17 cars on the lead lap. A total of seven cautions throughout the course of this race. We had eight last year.